This is a full hands-on comparison of the most popular Ryzen 4000 CPU. So I've had personal experience with these CPUs inside of laptops here in my studio. I've run benchmark tests, thermal tests, the whole gamut. So we're gonna talk about which one is best for you. And this video is specifically for creative professionals. So whether if you're a photographer, a graphic designer, a 3D modeler, a motion designer, a video editor, the works, let's dive right in. First and foremost, I've personally tested each of these laptops. I wanna get that right out of the way so you know that you're gonna be getting real benchmark tests that I have run. Secondly, these benchmarks are gonna be seen in Geekbench 5, Cinebench R20, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, 3D modeling software such as Autodesk, SolidWorks, PTC Creo. We're going to see thermal temps and component usage, recommended use cases for each processor, affiliate links in the description below if you're curious about the exact pricing of the laptops that I'm discussing and where you can pick them up. So those are there available to you. And if you do use them, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right. So lastly, what laptop are you considering as far as a Ryzen CPU is concerned. Go ahead and comment below right now. I'm curious how many of you are considering which laptop. We're gonna jump right into the laptops that I've used for these specific benchmarks. So jumping right in though, first and foremost, let's look at the Ryzen lineup that I will be looking at. And what I've seen are some of the most popular CPUs that are available inside of laptops. So right now we have the Ryzen 5 4500U. This laptop uh, that I used for it was the Lenovo Flex 5. It has six cores and six threads. It has a TDP of 15 watts. It has a base clock of 2.3 and a turbo clock of 4.1. The second laptop is the Ryzen 7 4700U inside of the Acer Swift 3, eight cores and eight threads. TDP of 15 watts, base clock of 2.0, turbo clock of 4.1. The Ryzen 5 4600H inside of the Acer Nitro 5 with six cores and 12 threads, a TDP of 45 watts, base clock of 3.0, turbo of 4.0. The Ryzen 7 4800H inside of the HP Omen, as well as the Asus Tough A15, but I personally like the HP Omen's performance a little bit better, has the eight cores and 16 threads with a 45 watt TDP, base clock of 2.9, turbo of 4.2. And finally, the Ryzen 9 4900HS inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14 with eight cores 16 threads with a 35 watt TDP base clock of 3.0 and a turbo clock of 4.3. So let's talk about TDP real quick before we move forward. Uh, TDP is refers to thermal design power. So it is used to measure the amount of heat a component is expected to output when under intense workloads. Thermal watts is not electrical watts, common confusion. So more watts equals better performance, but also higher temperatures and more power consumption. Uh, when a chip such as a CPU is rated to have a high TDP, it means that it generates a lot of heat. Heat is a byproduct of electricity, and that means that you can look at the dissipated heat of a processor, its TDP, to estimate how much power that processor needs. And so this is from Digital Citizen dot life, a quick quote there. So you can kind of get a little bit more perspective on what TDP is actually meaning inside of your processor. Not all Ryzen numbers are created equally. Before we jump in, I wanted to clear up a few things about Ryzen processors. So first and foremost, you see the U versus the H. So let's take a look at this. The Ryzen 7 4700U inside of the Acer Swift 3 has eight cores and eight threads. It has a TDP of 15 watts and a CTDP, that means configurable, um, to, of 10 to 25 watts. So let's say when your computer is plugged into battery, it can reach those 25 watt peaks, but when it's unplugged uh, and it's running on just its battery, uh, it can get down to about 10, wa uh, 10 watts of TDP, which allows it to have better power consumption. So it's gonna be less higher performance, but it's gonna have better power conserving abilities. And then of course you have the base clock of 2.0 and the turbo clock of 4.1. Now, when we look at our Ryzen 7 4800H, we have eight cores and 16 threads. That means we have multi-threading capabilities. We have a much higher TDP, which means the processor is gonna get hotter, which means ultimately that we can know that it's gonna be able to perform at a higher level. And its CTDP is 35 to 54. So when you're off batter, when you're off power on the battery, you can get down to 35 for power consuming, for power saving abilities. And when you're up to 54, uh, you're, that's when you're plugged into the wall and your computer is running off of the wall power and you can get up to that 54. And of course we have a 2.9 base and a 4.2 turbo. So this is the base clock here. So you have almost a whole gigahertz more of base clock, which means at a par level, at you know a general level where it can run consistently, you're getting almost a whole gig of 
speed faster. And so versus the base clock of the Ryzen Swift 3, uh, the Ryzen 7 4700U, where you're getting that much less, but the turbo can get up there. It just can't hold those peaks for as long. So that's where we're seeing some of the differences between these two processors. All right, the first laptop up is the Ryzen 7 4500U. That's inside of the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. And the model that I used to do these benchmarks came with 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive, a 14 inch screen and 64% sRGB and 48% Adobe RGB. And it was around $714, give or take. The, Ace, the Ryzen 7 4700U was inside of the Acer Swift 3. This came with 16 gigs of RAM. It has the eight cores and eight threads. This was a $673 laptop. The reason being uh, it's a little more affordable is because this was a touch screen where this one is not. All right, and then it has 512 gigs of solid state drive with a 64% sRGB and 47% Adobe RGB. Uh, the Ryzen 5 4600H was inside the Acer Nitro 5 with eight gigs of RAM, but I have actually run some of these tests with 16. But the base model of this product is 8 gigs of RAM, and that's where the price point sits at around $769. And it has 512 gigs of solid state drive with a 65% sRGB and 49% Adobe RGB. The HP Omen 15 inside of comes with the Ryzen 7 4800H with a 1660 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of storage, 97% sRGB and 71% Adobe RGB. And finally, topping off the list is the Ryzen 9 4900HS with the RTX 2060 Max-Q, 32 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of solid state hard drive. So as you can see, there are the specs, and we're gonna dive right into the benchmarks. In Photoshop, um, we see that the Ryzen 9 4900HS is taking the top, followed closely by the Ryzen 7 4800H in the Asus Tough A15 and the HP Omen, then working our way down. But you can see the scores here, they're actually all holding up fairly well inside of Photoshop because Photoshop is more of a processor based uh, program where the GPU is not the heaviest reliance. So you can see we have quite an even cascade here. Next up is the thermals. However, when it comes to thermals, we're seeing high TDP um, up here for the thermal. We're seeing a lot of heat coming out of this processor here with 82 degrees Celsius falling down to 72 degrees Celsius in the HP Omen, followed by the Acer Swift 3 with 71, 64, and then 60. Now, I did not list the Asus Tough A15 because I was not able to do an actual thermal test on this one because by the time I had it in my studio and it left, I wasn't able to do so. But I will say that the temperatures that I've seen from other channels, the average stable temperature of the Asus Tough A15 at high workload was around 85 to 87 plus degrees Celsius in a program like Photoshop. Next up is the Ryzen Photoshop CPU usage. As you see, the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5, which is the Ryzen 5 4500U, is about the most usage as it is the least powerful processor, followed by the Swift 3, the HP Omen, the Nitro 5, and the Asus Zephyrus G14. So cascades basically even, just like the cascade before. Um, and remember, lower is better here. So lower percentage usage means it's putting less stress on the CPU. Next up is the After Effects benchmark score. The Acer Swift 3 and the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 scored very low, so I did not include those scores. I wanted to focus mainly on these higher performing CPUs as they were complemented by their dedicated GPU. So in this scenario, the GPU had to work together with the CPU to get good performance. So we start down here with the Ryzen 5 4600H, the Ryzen 7 4800H, the Ryzen 9 4900HS, and then topping off the list because this laptop ran so hard to get this performance, um, the Asus Tough A15 with the Ryzen 7 4800H. Now, something I wanna mention is if we looked at the beginning um, in these laptop lineups, or not, sorry, laptop lineups, in the processor lineup, we saw that the 4900HS had a lower TDP. That means that it has a lower thermal watt output, or however you want to say that. If I'm saying that incorrectly, I apologize. But the Ryzen 
H is able to do a higher output. And so that is reflecting here in the After Effects score. So that higher output is showing us that the Asus TUF A15 is able to get a better score in a program like After Effects because it pushes that much harder to pop up that extra score. Next up, we have the Puget After Effects Render Score. And so what we're seeing here is, again, the Asus uh, TUF A15 up at the top of the charts with the 7400H, followed by the 4900HS, followed again by the 4800H, and then the 4600H. So right here, the Asus TUF A15 actually had 32 gigs of RAM, which helped the push this laptop higher. The HP Omen ran cooler and had 16 gigs of RAM. And so the reason I'm including these laptop oriented scores is because these are real life situations. I don't just wanna like see the CPU outside of its environment. And so 32 gigs of RAM versus 16 gigs of RAM, as well as this one running much hotter and this one running cooler. So you see that this laptop pushed it further than the HP Omen. Next up is Cinebench R20. As you see, this is only running the processor, so this does not affect uh, the GPU or the RAM. Uh, but as you see, we have the Asus TUF A15 with the Ryzen 7 4800H. We have the Ryzen 9 4900HS, and then this is again the Ryzen 7 4800H. So each of these laptops handles the performance slightly different, and so you can't just look at a CPU and say it's gonna perform this way, put it in a laptop and expect it to do so. Each OEM or manufacturer has their way of tuning the processor, the GPU, um, and how the computer handles the components. So I think seeing these processors in action is very important. Next up is the Geekbench single core CPU score. So we have the Asus Zephyrus G14 taking the top of the chart, followed by the Ryzen 7 4800H and the HP Omen, then the Asus TUF A15, so on and so forth. It works its way down the line. As you see, the Ryzen Swift 3 actually outperformed the Nitro with the Ryzen 5 4600H. As you see, the Ryzen 7 4700U actually outperformed the Ryzen 5 4600H uh, by about one point. So these are pretty on par as far as CPU to CPU is concerned, um, but definitely with a dedicated GPU, you're going to get more performance when you actually put this laptop to the test in applications like After Effects, Premiere Pro, uh, Photoshop, etc. Now for the multi-core score, you see the Ryzen 7 4800H sitting up at the top of the chart. That's because they have the same cores and threads uh, as the Ryzen 9 4800HS, except that S uh, is getting that lower TDP, so these are able to push a little bit harder. And then you see the other Ryzen 7 4800H, which ran a little bit cooler than the Asus TUF A15, coming up right behind the 4900HS, followed by the 54600H, the 74700U, and the 54500U. Now for the 4K export. Now this of course is a complement of RAM, GPU, and CPU, but still, nonetheless, we wanted to see how these perform in these circumstances. So the Asus Zephyrus G14 came in at three minutes and two seconds. What I did is I took a nine minute 4K clip, placed it into Premiere Pro, and then exported it out at full quality YouTube settings to 4K. So the HP Omen came in at four minutes and 13 seconds, followed by the Acer Nitro 5, the Asus TUF A15 was surprisingly slower. Um, because of the heat, it was really struggling to stay cool, and so there's a little bit of thermal throttling that took place on that export. Um, and then you have the Acer Swift 3, followed by the Idea Pad Flex 5. Now, I would not recommend expor exporting. I would not recommend editing 4K footage on these processors. It was an extremely laggy experience, a lot of drop to frames. Now, 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 I would not recommend editing on the Ryzen 7 4700U or the Ryzen 5 4500U. Um, it was a very laggy experience and a ton of drop frames. They were able to export the footage, um, but overall it was not a good editing experience. So I would definitely lean towards the H series processors. Next up is Ryzen in DaVinci Resolve with the 4K to 4K export. Same technique, took a 4K nine minute clip, placed it into DaVinci Resolve and exported it out at 4K full quality YouTube settings. Leading up the pack is the Asus TUF A15, followed by the Asus Zephyrus G14, HP Omen, Nitro, Swift 3, Flex 5. Same order as last time. All right, and for the 4K export thermal benchmarks, lower is better here, of course. So we're going to have the 
Zephyrus G14 leading off the pack at 87 degrees Celsius during the export. Uh, this is the stabilized temperature. So obviously during the export, you'll see the temperatures peak and then they'll stabilize. And then this was where they were for the most part of the export. So 87 degrees Celsius for the Zephyrus G14, quite a hot export. Um, and then 85 degrees Celsius for the piping tough A15. HP Omen dropped significantly by about 10 degrees Celsius, according to the G14, which was great to see. So that ran much cooler, followed by the Nitro 5, Swift 3, and Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. Next up is the Ryzen Premiere Pro component usage. So we see the Acer Nitro 5 using about 100% of the CPU, followed by the HP Omen using about 100% of the CPU, Swift 3 about 95, Zephyrus G14 about 61, and the IdeaPad about 42. Now let's talk about the Ryzen lineup per use case. So the Ryzen 5 4500U inside of the Lenovo Flex 5 with six cores and six threads is best for graphic design, some 1080p video editing, photo editing, illustrating, productivity tasks, web browsing, digital painting, and web design. The Ryzen 7 4700U, the Acer Swift 3, eight cores and eight threads, best for graphic design, 1080p video editing, photo editing, illustrating productivity tasks, web browsing, digital painting, and web design as well. The Ryzen 5 4600H in the side of the Acer Nitro 5, six cores and 12 threads would be best for all the prior things that you see in the U series, plus 4K video editing, motion design, light 3D modeling, development, and architecture. The Ryzen 7 4800H inside of the HP Omen, eight cores and 16 threads, recommended for all prior plus 4K video editing, motion design, full 3D modeling, development, and architecture. And then finally, the Ryzen 9 4900HS inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14, eight cores, 16 threads, recommended again for all prior use cases plus 4K video editing, motion design, full 3D modeling, development, and architecture. Now, if you're curious about the exact prices of the models that I've been discussing inside of this video, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use one of those links to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you have any questions, definitely comment below. I'd love to answer those. And as always, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.